While the 93rd was still in England before their second deployment to Africa, something interesting happened. The crews were directed to fly low-level missions. They didn't understand this because every time they went across the English Channel, they would be at high altitude for their protection. So why were they flying at low level? They had a, had a briefing for each mission. They finally told us where we were going. Our radio operators, he said it was a 1,200 mile trip, a round trip. So he said, well, by golly, I'm, he got a map and he measured 1,200 miles from, said exact, and it was exactly uh, Romania. On August 1st, 1943, during their second deployment to North Africa, the 93rd was one of five B-24 bomb groups involved in a top secret mission called Tidal Wave. The objective was to fly over the Alps into Albania, down into the plains of Ploesti, Romania, and attack oil refineries, which provided a large amount of oil production for Nazi Germany. We'd been trained for the low-level Ploesti raid. They had trained us for it, and we couldn't get away from that. So while we were down North Africa, I flew number 25, 26, 27, then Ploesti, and then I came home. They picked key points within the complex, and they said, if we can hit these particular points, we will cripple this facility. It will be very difficult to repair. They were going to go calm out drop down low level so that they would be underneath the radar of the Germans. That was the plan. That's not what happened. We flew maybe 12,000 feet for a while, you know, until we got to start coming down, you know, when we got to the target. It, it was uh, anywhere from 500 feet down to 150, 200, off the low. When we were flying, you could see houses right on each right, and they were shooting at us from both sides of us. We dropped lower and flew faster. A city lay ahead. Co-pilot Podersky shouted, It's Bucharest. God, we turned too soon. As the first two groups enter the target area, they're supposed to fly over three cities and then make a turn to the southeast to ingress to the target area. Unfortunately, the lead bomb group turns after the second city rather than the third. As the two groups continue to fly south, the 93rd realizes they're not on the correct heading. They turn back toward the target area. Now, in the meantime, the last three groups correctly fly over the three cities. You got this mass mingling of aircraft. A lot of targets are not hit. Aircraft are destroyed. Everybody egresses just to get out of the target area. Well, you know, it was follow the leader. And then going into the target, we went in six abreast behind each other. And we didn't hit our assigned target, but the one we hit was the one never put back in use again, because we hit it, and the, and the group behind us hit it, too. Flashes and black. Oily columns of smoke revealed where circus ships had already dropped. I realized we'd be crossing at 50 feet over gas storage tanks. The knot in my stomach tightened another notch. A liberator ahead of us was hit, and streams of scarlet flame came from waste windows. A bomb exploded, and a gas storage tank arose into the air between two of our planes. I saw another ship go into a black cloud, but never come out. Colonel Baker's plane was on fire. He pressed the attack. Then his ship somersaulted to the ground in a flaming skid. With navigational errors and extensive German defenses, the Ploesti raid would end up being a strategic failure for the United States. 178 B-24 Liberators flew the mission. Only 88 returned to bases in North Africa. A total of 45 planes were lost, and the remaining either crash-landed or limped into other countries. Out of 1,620 airmen, 446 would be killed or missing in action, 130 wounded, and 79 interned. Up until the Ploesti mission, no other military force was as highly decorated. Every airman on the raid received the Distinguished Flying Cross. Dead, 
alive, or in captivity. 14 distinguished service crosses and silver stars were given, and an astounding five medals of honor were awarded. Two of them posthumously to Lieutenant Colonel Addison E. Baker and Major John L. Juristad of the 93rd. North Africa had been cruel to the 93rd's men and machines during three special assignments. Expedition number two, Ploesti, the centerpiece, was ghastly in human terms. Pre- and post-Ploesti missions from the desert had been long and grueling. Heat, sand, and dust were defiant. Hardwick stay-behinds realized this return to England would be hazardous for overtaxed men and machines. Everyone turned out at Hardwick to welcome the valiant, frazzled, and bedraggled desert rats. This irregular parcel of County Norfolk was the closest to a second home they'd ever known. 